In this tutorial video, we're going to talk about postulates and paragraph proofs. So a postulate, or axiom, is a statement that is accepted as true without proof. And really they're used mainly to explain reasoning when in, um, analyzing statements. So let's take a look at an example. So we're going to ask, is the following statement always, sometimes, or never true? So the statement is, if two coplanar lines intersect, then the point of intersection lies in the same plane as the two lines. So first, I actually really like to draw a picture. So we've got two lines that are on the same plane. So to draw my plane, I'm just going to go like this. And I'm going to have one of my lines green and the other one yellow because I love the Green Bay Packers. So those are my two lines that are on the same plane. And what they're talking about is that the intersection of those two points lies in the same plane, so this point right here. Now, as obvious as that may seem, that that intersection would lie in the same plane as those two lines, in mathematics, you always need a concrete reason as to why something happens. And in our textbook, we actually have a postulate that will help us prove this. So we actually have a postulate, which is 2.5 in our textbook, but that number may change based off of different textbooks. The postulate says that if two points lie in a plane, then the entire line containing those points lie in that plane. So if I were to find more points on one of these lines, so let's say I look at the yellow line, there's another point on that line. So those two points are in a plane, and this point on the green line is also in the plane. The place where they intersect is a point that both of those lines share. So this postulate really helps to prove that this statement is always going to be true. So instead of us having to think of our own reason um, to, as to why this is always true, these postulates can actually be our reasoning. So if two points lie in a plane, then the entire line containing those points are also in that plane. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is a proof. And a proof is uh, basically a logical argument in which each statement you make is supported by a statement that is accepted as true. Statements that are accepted as true are postulates. Um, they can also be theorems. They can also be called corollaries. They're all a little bit different, but the reason why we look at postulates first is because they are already accepted to be true. And the kind of proof that we're going to take a look at in this particular section is called a paragraph proof. And this is a proof in the form of a paragraph that uses conditional statements. So every statement is an if and a then. These paragraph proofs also have another name. They're also called informal proofs. So what we're going to do next is take um, a look at an example and see exactly how to form a paragraph proof by scratch. So here's our problem. It's going to say that given that M is the midpoint of segment XY, Write a paragraph proof to show that XM is congruent to MY. So our first step is to list the given information, draw a picture, and state what we're proving. So what we're going to do is anytime you start a proof, you're always going to have a given piece of information or multiple pieces of given information. In this case, we know that M is the midpoint of x, y. And we are also going to state what we're trying to prove, which is that segment x, m is congruent to segment m, y. So now comes the last part of our first step in drawing a diagram. So there's my picture. 
So the next step is the big meat and potatoes of this whole thing. It's the proof itself. So we're going to begin our chain of statements with supporting reasons. So every time you create a sentence or a statement that's if-then form or something like that, you must always state what you're trying to show and what supports it. So it's this postulate, it's this theorem, um, it's this formula. Those are the reasons that you need. So to start this out, we are going to start by stating that if M is a midpoint of a segment, what in fact does that actually mean? Well, what it tells us is that when I look at my picture, this length here, XM, should be equal to the length MY. Length and congruency are not necessarily the same. They're very similar, but there's a slight difference. Lengths have equal signs, okay? Congruency is, and hang on one second, I actually made one tiny error. It's the lengths that are congruent. It's the numbers that are equal. So for example, if this had a length of five and this had a length of five, five is equal to five. So it's the number parts that are actually equivalent. It's the lengths that are congruent. Okay, so I apologize for that. So that when we take a look at this, that's how I'm going to state the first part of this. So if M is the midpoint of segment XY, then from the definition of midpoint, we know that XM is equivalent to MY. In other words, the values of their lengths are the same. We have not yet gotten to the point where they're congruent yet, so how would I do that from what I've already stated? And the trick is to look at your last piece of information that you previously said. So we said that XM is equal to MY. Well, what does that mean in terms of congruency? What does that mean in terms of their lengths? Well, it means that segment XM and segment XY have the same measure. So, how does that get us to congruency? So, to get us to the end, we're going to say that by the definition of congruence, if two segments have the same measure, then they are congruent. So, this is how we get from the very beginning to the very end, even though it may seem very obvious that, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to prove, you have to go through this process of reasoning. So, we can make our final statement and um, I like to use this notation, this triangle with just three dots. It means therefore in mathematics. So this says, therefore, segment XM is congruent to segment MY. And if we go to back to the previous page, if we look at what we were trying to prove, this is exactly what we were trying to prove. And this should always be the very last thing that you ever say in a proof. So this talked about our postulates and how to make a paragraph proof. And that will conclude this tutorial.